Uh, just to go over what we're going to review with you today, we're going to talk about our guiding principles. Uh, we have a series of principles that uh, we um, put into effect to support um, the schools and districts, for example. Um, all decision, decisions should be based on multiple measures, not on a single measure. We're going to talk about um, some uh, support examples that we're doing with our school districts right now. So you can um, get an idea of how we're using data and how we're helping school districts. Uh, we're going to talk about some of our longitudinal data tools. We have many different tools that are available to schools and districts across the state. Everybody learns a little bit differently. Everybody looks at data a little bit differently. So we try to make sure that we have different tools available. Uh, we're also going to talk about our data coaches. What makes a great data coach? How our data coaches work with schools and districts across our state? Um, and then, you know, hopefully we'll have time for some questions, but again, you know, feel free to reach out to Mike and I at any time. Okay, so Mike and I are really going to bounce things off each other. We have been working together since 2007, so I'm going to do some, Mike's going to do some, we're going to interrupt each other, the whole thing. So, um, what are New Hampshire's guiding principles? Um, as I said earlier, multiple measures. Um, it's important that um, um, school uh, educators, teachers, principals have an opportunity to look at multiple measures. Um, they can look at multiple assessments um, in our data warehouse, which include um, our state assessment test called the NECAP, um, Dibbles, Ames Web, and WE data. We want them to make sure that they can look at uh, multiple assessment results before making any uh, decisions. It's important to have organizational support. Um, teachers need to have the support of their principals. Principals need to have support of their district administrators. Um, it's, um, you know, people won't be effective, teachers won't be effective using data if they don't have the time and they don't have the um, backing of their leadership in their building. So we really work with the leadership in, in the buildings uh, to make sure that everyone has that support. Um, student level instruction, our data warehouse enables um, schools and uh, district staff to really look down at the student level detail. Um, teachers can see all students in their classroom and they can see um, the multiple measures for their students along with demographic data and they can run um, all different kinds of reports um, using our data analysis tool to look at um, the student level data to inform instruction. Assessment competency. We know that um, teachers aren't often experts in uh, reviewing the results of assessment, uh, assessments and assessment data. So we work with them to help them understand um, the assessment results and how to um, implement intervention strategies using those results. And we also, our data analysis tool is also an assessment tool, so uh, teachers can enter uh, local assessments online and have the results available um, to look side by side with other assessments. Some of the offerings that our uh, data tools include and in, in the work that our uh, data coaches do um, on a daily basis with teachers and principals throughout the state, uh, we help them to understand the growth of students uh, school-wide, class-wide, or within a subgroup. We can have you know, a, a subgroup of uh, just special education where we're really just taking a look at uh, the students that are in special education and what their uh, data is telling us and, and how to improve their instruction. Uh, our, we can create with our uh, Performance Plus tool, we can create um, and administer um, a culture or climate survey. So some of our schools are implementing that with the assistance of our data coaches. Um, our tool also provides an opportunity to engage with parents and students. Uh, teachers can run reports that they can share with parents, they can share with students, they can take a look at the growth, they can look at the areas uh, together that need improvement. We also use information from our Data Analysis Tool Performance Plus to target instruction or to identify gaps, many different reports that are available to teachers. Um, we can track competency attainment. Um, part of our Performance Plus tool includes um, competencies for career and tech education. 
So our career and tech education um, centers can um, go into the Performance Plus tool, check off the competencies that students have achieved so they can um, see uh, gaps in areas, again, where um, additional instruction may be required. Um, we can identify trends in student demographic data. So again, all of the data can be run uh, by a classroom, but it also can be run by various uh, demographics. Uh, students can be grouped together and um, instruction can be planned that way. Um, our data coaches help to facilitate data team conversations focused around student data. And uh, the last one is to validate or negate hypotheses. Sometimes we think certain things are happening, but when you really look at the data, um, you can see that something else is really going on. So Mike is going to talk about some of the examples of how our data coaches are implementing strategies with some of our um, school districts. Thank you, Irene. Um, so I'm going to pause too. Are there any questions so far? And feel free to ask questions or stop us. If Thank you. So the question, if you didn't hear it, was who are the data coaches and how many are there? Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the data coaches a little bit later, but there are, to give, helps to, I know, to give some kind of um, sense to all of this. So we have in New Hampshire, we're a small state, so we have about 1.2 million people, so it's about a tenth the size of Pennsylvania, just to give you an order of magnitude. Um, we have eight coaches. Um, most of them are part-time, um, They about half-time. Um, they all come from um, education backgrounds. Uh, so we have somebody who's a literacy specialist and you know, is now being a data coach. We have somebody who used to be a principal um, and is now a data coach. So um, they all come from, most all of them come from school backgrounds, actually a business administrator as well. Um, and uh, they go out and, and help the schools in, in ways that we'll talk about. Yep, so the question about who can access the data. So um, in New Hampshire, it is up to the school district to give out security. Um, in general, it is the teachers, it's, so it's down to the teacher level. Um, we have uh, really, I guess, three primary levels. We kind of have a district level, a school level, and then a class level access. Um, and it's up to the schools to hand out that access to their, their teachers the way they want. Um, by default, people generally will have teach class level access so they can see their class and the students in their class. Um, but they can be given school level access or district level access. You know, frequently a special education coordinator may have district level, school level access or district level access. Um, you know, if you're a, some schools feel like it's important for the third grade teacher to see all of the third grade or to see all the, the entire school because of their um, you know, role in looking at curriculum across grades, so they may have school level access. So New Hampshire, just the way we're structured, we have 170 districts, but that, you know, districts don't necessarily mean because they can be apples and oranges in terms of the size. Um, but I imagine your regional center is probably close to a, portion, a large portion of our state. Um, so the stuff we're doing is stuff that might be very applicable to a regional center or to a district office as well. So we want to talk, I want to give you some examples of what it looks like when a data coach goes into a school and what they're doing with those schools, because maybe that'll they'll help. Um, as Irene mentioned, um, and as uh, the first slide talked about, this initiative was called the Initiative for School Empowerment and Excellence. The letter I, the number four, S-E-E. -E, initiative for School Empowerment and Excellence. So our effort was always around how do we help schools get better? How do we empower schools to improve? Um, so this effort started with our data collection, um, but it wasn't about collecting data, it was about when we get this, how can we help schools? So with that in light, one of the guiding principles Irene talked about is multiple measures. We felt very strongly from the get-go that schools, they can learn from a state assessment test, but it's much more than, they need much more than that in terms of student information if they're really gonna help target and differentiate education for each student. And so we, and, and schools told us this, I mean this wasn't something we came up with, this is what the schools told us. <clears throat> so from the beginning we focused this around getting multiple measures in place. And when I say multiple measures, it means multiple assessments. Um, so in New Hampshire, we at a state level pull data from NWA or Dibbles or Ames Web. Um, um, there's a couple others, SAT, PSAT, um, the college, all the college board data. Um, all of that data, about seven or so assessment vendors, Star Renaissance Learning is another one. All that data can get sent to the department and then we push it back out to the schools. So if a school might have some of their kids doing um, Dibbles and some other kids doing NWA in one grade or the other, 
Um, they don't have to worry about getting the data into the state warehouse. It all gets sent to the state and we put it in the system for them. Um, so then a teacher can look at not just the state assessment test for a student, but how that student did on both on the state assess on Dibbles last year and Dibbles the year before and um, NIWA this you know, year and the state assessment test and look at all that in one place. Um, so part of our focus is helping them give a central place to look at you know, a lot of information about students. You know, I think nationally, we all are um, you know, up to our ears in terms of assessing students and collecting data. We really want to focus on getting that information to make decisions to make, um, and provide value for teachers to make impact on students and learning. And so that's what this has all been about. So I'm going to walk through these four examples. Manchester is one of our larger districts. There are about 15,000 students or so. Um, it's a K-12 district. Uh, we focus um, really two initiatives. The one I'm going to talk about is K-5, but we're also doing a middle school initiative with them. Um, the Seacoast schools, um, there is one school in the Seacoast of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is 18 miles that borders the Atlantic Ocean, so we've got a small little Seacoast area. Um, within that Seacoast, there's one school that we worked with that's um, uh, middle school, sixth grade. It's a small school, about 250 kids. Um, we helped them, and now they're rolling out the work we did to a couple of other elementary schools or middle schools within their district. So I'll talk about what we did there. Um, Merrimack Valley is a larger district, many towns that are all part of the same district, um, and we're helping them pull together some data. Um, and then Summersworth is another smaller, um, smaller district that we have. It's a, kind of a, a working class district, um, more, more, hot, more um, poverty in that area. Um, so a variety of different schools and districts that I'm gonna, we're working with. So Manchester. So again, the focus in our help with them is how can they use data to impact instruction. So Manchester was a school district that when you looked at the state assessment test, they had a lot of troubles in terms of just, according to that metric, in terms of the number of kids who were proficient in both math and, and ELA. Um, so they had a large number of kids that were not proficient, you know, over 50% who were not proficient uh, based on the state test. So we met with their, their um, this super, assistant superintendent asked us to come in, and we met with, that, with a couple of our data coaches, met with the assistant superintendent, and talked about their issue, which was the poor performance and about what measurements they're using to help identify students' needs and um, address curriculum. And realize that really they didn't have a plan across the district, there was certainly no consistency across the district, in what measurements they were using to identify the, the needs and direct instruction. Um, so one school might be using NWA assessment tests to do something, maybe they're giving it to the students and not even looking at the results. Another school might be using, um, you know, uh, Fontes and Pinnell or Dibbles or something else for ELA. Um, and again, maybe some teachers are using it, some teachers might not have been. The other thing we talked about is, about is the fact that, you know, there's, there's two pieces of, well, there's lots of pieces of instruction in school, in classrooms, um, but you know, one major piece is your core curriculum. What are you trying to teach every student? Then the second piece is kind of a response to intervention, a response to instruction where you're targeting your learning to students based on their individual needs. Part of the discussion was you first have to understand and make sure everyone's getting the core basis, basic knowledge before you can you know, help move kids even to the next level. And so part of what was decided was across the district they were going to come up with some local assessments that every K-5 to teacher would use. And there were three different assessments that they decided they wanted to focus on. One was um, fact fluency. So does a child, does a fourth grader know his addition table or his multiplication table? Um, does a fifth grader? Um, so just understanding facts. Um, so they developed a local assessment. So our data coaches worked with a team of teachers to help them develop a local assessment just to measure fact fluency. The second one was um, computations. So a little bit higher order thinking, some computation um, skills, um, and that would be, um, those were targeted based on the grade level. Um, and they developed that, those frameworks or that assessment. And then the final was an end of unit assessment. Um, and I think they actually have a quarterly assessment as well. So the idea was developing some local assessments that were used consistently across the, school, across the district and that teachers would look at the data to help inform instruction and move students where they needed to go. The first thing they found, and I think this next slide might show some of it. Uh, nope, we don't have that one. So the first thing um, they found was looking at the fact fluency. They had, ki they had um, schools where at fifth grade, you know, 70 or 80% of the kids didn't know their addition. Um, and this was stuff that they didn't see because there wasn't a consistent way to measure it. And so they just, and that fact fluency assessment was an assessment that took kids like three minutes to do. 
So it's a very quick assessment. They have 60 questions. It's the same edition um, for all grades, you know, K to, or three to five. I'm not sure what the grades are exactly, but for it's the same assessment. Um, and they're doing it every month. And now teachers and principals look at the data and it makes them realize. So, you know, a fifth grade teacher or sixth grade teacher would have said, that's not my problem. You know, my kids, they learned that back in third or fourth grade and they would assume they know it. But now by providing that local baseline assessment for just those math facts, it makes it very clear to teachers and principals what kids don't know. And you can't learn how to, um, you know, divide fractions or multiply fractions if you don't know your basic math facts or your basic, you know, your basic multiplication or addition facts. Um, so that type of work is, is work that we help schools do. So this was an example where we worked with the district, helped them develop these frameworks. We have a tool and we'll talk more about it called Performance Plus um, where you set up these frameworks. They can con conduct the tests online, they can con conduct the test paper either way, um, and we help them you know, develop the, the plan and, and roll it out. Um, help them create some tools that um, some deliverables that principals can then fill out each month to show share at, at a district level of you know what percentage of their kids are getting are understanding these math fluencies or the computation or the other assessments. So one example. Any questions before I go on? Um, another example is a writing rubric. So here, this is the Seacoast town. It's a small town. Um, it's got a school, 250 kids. Um, the sixth through eighth grade have one teacher per subject. We worked with that school, had a concern about their writing. Um, there was, uh, I guess, based on either the state proficiency test or other indicators within the, the school, they felt like the writing the students were not doing was, up, was not up to the par that they wanted. Um, so we went in and helped them develop a framework in this Performance Plus tool um, with a rubric for uh, writing argument um, and uh, worked with the cross-competency te teacher team. So, you know, seventh grade, bringing the math, science, English and history, social studies teachers together, uh, teacher together, and that team collectively um, took a student's writing um, that they performed on this writing um, argument, uh, argument of writing um, test, um, and collectively scored it. They identified what the different areas they were going to be looking at, so statement of purpose, organization, evidence, etc. And then across the different subjects, the teachers collectively started to understand what it was that they wanted to look for when reviewing the writing for students. And so now the math teacher and the science teacher and the social studies teacher, not just the English teacher, is able to more effectively um, help students improve in their writing capability. So another example where our data coach has worked with them to develop this framework, um, to identify you know, what are the items that they're gonna be um, scoring, um, and then to help walk them through a scoring process so that teachers learn from each other. <coughs> A third example is Merrimack. So this is, again, a larger school district, many towns. Um, they had been using many different assessments throughout the district, not necessarily with a lot of consistency or, or coordination in terms of reviewing the data, um, but they had been using some everyday math unit assessments. They had been doing Fount Fountas of Pinnell and Gates and McGin McGinnity, which are all national assessments if you're not familiar with them, um, primarily uh, in a combination of math first and then some ELA. So what we helped them do was use this tool to pull all that data together. Um, so where some of these reports, they might have gone to Fontes and Pinnell to see some results or Gates McGinnity, they didn't have the ability to pull all that information together. Um, so we developed these frameworks for them in this, this Performance Plus tool that we'll talk about again in a few minutes um, and helped them get that data into a central location. Um, and then their administration worked with the schools and we helped them you know, kind of think through this process to set up standard professional learning community, PLC meetings, and other grade level meetings within the schools so that they would have a methodology how they would look at this data and make decisions on either putting students into RTI groups, into response to intervention groups, or doing other classroom um, segmentation of students based on the different student, uh, the, the, the different pieces of student data. So, you know, just another example of how we help a school really think about the data they have and then methodically figure out how they can make use of that data um, to help the students. You know, so frequently we'll find, again, as I talked about earlier, you know, schools and teachers are, are giving these tests, but they're not necessarily having a good process to look at the data and make use of it. And then Summersworth is, was very, sim very similar to the Merrimack Valley. Um, 
again, we help them pull together a variety of different assessments. Um, this is an example, and, and I think I'll show it again in a few slides, but a, a report that a teacher can then pull up that has a list of their students and the different assessment results um, you know, in a matrix um, so that they can look at the results of the students and make some educational changes for those students. Um, we also, uh, with the school, um, they realized one of the things they wanted to look at was the climate of their school. And so we helped them put together a climate survey that, again, this Performance Plus tool allowed them to administer the survey um, and collect information about, about school climate from students. Um, so another way that they could pull in not just maybe academic content into uh, this tool, but also being able to look at climate and student perceptions and understand how that might impact student performance and student learning. So I'll walk you through kind of the features and functionality of this tool that, that we kind of is, a, is a kind of the central pin of our work with school districts. All right, so Performance Plus is the tool that is kind of our main um, tool that schools use to get student level data. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's got security that lets you drive down from the district to the you know, school to individual classes um, and then down into students and you have access to, to the information that's appropriate for you as a teacher or as a principal. Um, there are a whole laundry list of reports, um, and I'll talk through some of those as we go forward. Um, but you know, suffice it to say, you know, any most any report you'd want to be able to do with uh, the different student data you could do. Um, some of it is, I would say that the tool, um, in some ways, could be more user friendly. So some of these, it really takes somebody to get into it and understand how to run some of these reports, and that's definitely something that we want to improve in the future, and, and I would say it's definitely um, you know, somewhat of an obstacle at times. Um, but there, there have been things we've added to it where we can like push reports to teachers, so a teacher will automatically get a report when they log in, and they don't have to choose any parameters. They just click a button and it runs the report. So we, do, we are trying to do things to make it easier, but certainly one um, issue is, is the level of complexity um, and training that it requires. Um, I should mention Performance Plus is part of the Sun God Corporation. They actually, Performance Plus, the company started in, I think, Mechanicsburg. Um, so, did any of you use Performance Plus in your districts? One, a couple of you? Um, so, I know that they've got, they are in many districts, in, at least I understand they're in many districts in Pennsylvania. Um, they, they are, uh, we're a state that uses their data, and then Delaware is another state that uses their system at a state level um, for all our schools. In addition to just analyzing reports and running reports, there's, a lot, there's several things you can do with Performance Plus. And again, when we, if you're thinking about providing tools to your schools, I encourage you to think about all these different types of pieces of functionality. Um, it's more, I think schools will find, find the system a lot more valuable if it's more than just reporting. Um, so this does allow you to report across multiple measures, so that was a key, right? Don't just report your state, your state assessment results. You need to be able to pull together data across multiple measures. Um, this allows you to create your own local assessment. So as I mentioned earlier, like the, flat, the fact fluency or the computation assessments we did in the Manchester School District, this tool lets you build your own assessment. It has a content library of questions, um, so if you want to look for questions about you know, uh, multiplying fractions, you search for the standard that deals with that, and it brings you up a, a content library of questions, and you can actually pull those questions and create your own little local assessment. Um, so that's one thing it allows you to do. Um, you can then uh, conduct that assessment online. So you can do it online or you can do it in paper. Um, you can uh, create interventions for students. So it lets you uh, say, you know, you run an assessment, you, you've just um, performed your STAR assessment, um, you bring back the results and you realize that there's these 15 kids that seem to be you know, having difficulties with um, you know, some concept. Uh, you can group those kids and then create, uh, an assign them an intervention. And so maybe, you know, whatever intervention you might be using for those students, you can assign that intervention and actually track the progress over time in the tool. Um, so it allows you to do that. Um, you can develop a learning plan. So you can actually develop an individual learning plan. You can meet with parents and put in goals the parents might have. Um, you can uh, add an electronic, por electronic portfolio so you can include, um, you know, pieces of student work in the system as well. And, and then you can drill down and look at the history of the students. So as an you know, eighth grade teacher, I can go and look at the past six years, at least in New Hampshire, the past six years of data and look at for trends over time. Um, you know, one example is uh, we, were, we uh, did a training um, with uh, the other day and one of the students that we were looking at 
um, had missed, had a large drop in scores between like fifth and sixth grade. And looking at the attendance, because that's also in there, I realized that there was a big attendance problem that year. Um, so it helps you identify and flag students that you then might want to ask more questions and try to figure out what, what you can do to, to help. Um, and then allows you to analyze the results across all the different demographics. So within the system, in addition to the multiple assessments, we have attendance, we have race, gender, um, we have, you know, elimination of proficient involvement. Um, all the other typical characteristics about students are in the system, suspension information as well. Um, so this is just an example of an assessment uh, scores report. So this is a report that uh, you can pull up and it, you don't see it here for <laughs> privacy reasons, but um, students' names are on the left. And then you as a teacher can choose what assessments you want to include. And to your question too, you can include, you can, you can drive down depending on the level of detail um, and include more columns. So you could just have a, the math score or if that assessment is broken down into geometry measurements and functions and algebra or other things, you could have each one of those individual section scores in, on this report. Um, it allows you to do scatter plots. Um, so in this example, we're showing fifth grade on our state assessment versus sixth grade the following year. And so what this allows you to do is each one of these dots is a student. Um, so students down here had done well in fifth grade, but they had, they, because they're, they're on the bottom side of the diagonal axis, um, because they've dropped down, that means they dropped down in sixth grade and not performing as well in sixth grade. You know, these kids up here moved up. They, they were proficient and now they're proficient with distinction. So a school might want to take a look at those kids up in that box and say, what did we do right last year? You know, what are some, you know, is there some discussion the teachers might want to have as a fifth grade team or sixth grade team and say, what is it that made those students move up? And, and then, you know, they might want to look at the kids who fell down and say, you know, what is it we can do to help make sure those kids don't fall behind? Um, this is um, just an area that's um, an, a student portfolio. So this is just to demonstrate the fact that um, there's a whole lot of information about students that you can drill down in here and look over years. Um, you can look uh, at the classes they were in, the assessments they took. Um, you can look at portfolios if you put together a learning portfolio for the student. Um, all of that is in the system. Um, this is the online assessment. So as I mentioned earlier, you can do some of this online. Um, so you can actually run an assessment online. It doesn't have the sophistication. We're a smart and balanced state which has this um, uh, technology enhanced questions. You can't do those yet, uh, but you can do some, some basic multiple choice and short answer open-ended questions. Um, and let me turn over to Irene and she's gonna talk. In it. So, so Performance Plus is one system that lets you drive down to the student level. As Irene mentioned earlier, we understand people learn differently and so we have different tools that other folks can use or people can use if they don't feel comfortable getting down into that reporting engine and looking at student level data. So Irene's going to talk to you about some of the other reporting tools that we have. Right. So um, just quickly, we have uh, developed an early warning system that um, is available to um, teachers, guidance, guidance counselors, principals, superintendents. Um, teachers can only see the students in their classroom. Uh, principals and guidance counselors can see um, students in the whole building and superintendents can see the, the whole district. Um, so again, we started with uh, Bob Balfans from Johns Hopkins University um, to develop some of the um, indicators that would um, identify the, the risk of students. And then we worked with a pilot group. That's one of the things that we do a lot in New Hampshire is um, anytime we're developing something new or working through reporting, we try to bring in specialists from the field. So we brought in uh, several guidance counselors and principals and really talked about what are the indicators um, that a student um, may eventually drop out of school. So this report is available for grades four um, through 12. And uh, the indicators are, are gen the general indicators um, that Bob Balfans uses as well. And um, it's about absences, um, behaviors. We have suspension data. We also use um, the math assessment, the statewide math assessment, um, English assessment, and a couple of other indicators. Um, and one of the things that we learned through this process was, you know, we heard from a lot of the principals and um, um, guidance counselors when we started this saying that we know who our students are, we know the students that are in trouble. Um, but when we were testing, we brought in our pilot group and um, we gave them their set of students and the one principal, the, when she brought up her report, her number one highest risk student, she told us that was not her student. She said, no, this one's not my student. And so we had our developer with us 
So he immediately started to dig in, look for that student. She got on the phone with her school and come, you know, of course the student was one of her students um, and she had not realized that student was at risk. You know, by looking at different indicators, some of them don't really, you know, some kids are not in trouble. You know, they're kind of just below the radar and, and when you have um, something like an early warning system, it can really bring some of those um, kids to the top or at least to the forefront so that you can dig a little bit deeper. The risk indicator is also available um, in our Performance Plus tool. We just transfer the risk indicator so all students are identified as high, low, or medium risk and um, if a teacher wants to look a little bit deeper into the data they can you know, look at that in Performance Plus and look at the various assessments and things like that. So if anybody has any questions on this tool, please feel free to uh, get, reach out to me anytime. We also have um, on our website um, our school and district profile. This is um, uh, our tool basically for parents um, and other um, you know, groups across the state, but it's all aggregate data and provides um, data on um, the district and the school, uh, um, accountability data, test result data, um, staff, student data. So and it, there's a lot of graphs throughout. Um, so this is a great place for parents to go if they want to do a comparison from school to school. There's also a three school or a three district comparison so that you can um, choose three schools that you want to compare from different districts and um, look at graduation rates, dropout rates, for example, funding, transportation costs, all kinds of financial information as well. We also have um, a growth model in place. Uh, I don't know if um, how many of you might be familiar with the Colorado growth model. This is um, similar to the Colorado growth model. And in this example, we can see that um, Dover High School, for example, or uh, Dover Elementary School, um, implemented a new reading program so you can see the growth over a three-year period there's the four four quadrants and you want to be able to see the bubbles move the bubbles are um, students and at, you want to be able to see over the three years that these bubbles move to the higher point and so in this example this was a great example they implemented a new reading program really wanted to see the end results and over three years you can see here that most of this bubble moved into the high growth and high achievement. We also have longitudinal reports that are available for, um, for the public on our, on our website. Um, this one uh, talks about our NECAP, our state assessment test and um, graphs each of the grades, grades three through six in this example. Um, so it talks about the percent proficient, gives the score per percent proficient, um, the average scale score, the number of students that took the test, and um, gives a graphical view so that, um, you know, that is, is a lot uh, more eye-catching to some people. We can also create this, or it's also available by subgroup, so we have it by limited English proficient, we have it by special education, um, and different subgroups like that. So I'm kind of running out of time, so I want to rush. Um, we talked about our data coaches. We have um, eight data coaches uh, on staff right now, part of our longitudinal data system grant. Um, they all have school education experience. They have worked in the classrooms. They all have different specialties. We have some that specialize in building data teams, some that specialize in math, some that are um, English specialists. Uh, we have a principal, a former principal, so that's a great asset for our data coaches as well. Um, so our data coaches specialize in specific areas. If a school district really wants to work on their math program, we'll try to send out our math coach. Uh, but they also work together and can cover any area. And they all have very great um, presentation skills. They like to uh, work with people. They're strong technically. Um, so those are some of the things that we find are um, imperative with uh, data coaches. And again, different learning styles. Um, so our data coaches really try to work with the schools and district staff um, in a variety of ways. So our data coaches do provide hands-on, on-site support. 
We also have several conferences throughout the state. Uh, we have one annual uh, data conference that's in the center of our state, and then we try to have regional conferences in different areas of our state. Our state's really small, but we still hear the complaints of, I don't want to drive two hours. So um, we try to have regional conferences. We do a lot of online webinars, and any of the uh, webinars that we do, we record so that um, schools and district staff can um, you know, attend those webinars at their convenience. We have a series of learning paths on our New Hampshire network, um, which is kind of like a mini course uh, for teachers um, to take, and they can get credits. Um, for taking some of those courses as well. We have toolkits, uh, documentation of how to develop uh, data teams, for example, some <coughs> guiding principles, um, worksheets, things like that. And we do offer phone support. Our Performance Plus vendor is available. Um, they have a help desk for phone support, and our data coaches are also available by phone <coughs> and uh, by email. Uh, just to go over some sample data tools, Mike, do you want to take this? I don't know how much time we have left. So we got a few more minutes. So um, I'll just go through these quickly, but we just wanted to give you an example of some of the tools that we use with schools, just again to think about if you're supporting schools or you know, as you're working with schools, what are some things that might help them? <clears throat> so the first is this data dive um, protocol. So again, I think the main message is that you know, teachers, their primary focus isn't looking at data or figuring out how to make sense of data, right? They're, they're what they've been trained in and what their focus is is on teaching students and, you know, developing curriculum and instruction. It's not about analyzing data. Um, so, you know, if you want schools to effectively use data, you really need to help train them and help give them the support to do that. So this data dive is a four-step process that we go through with, with teacher teams. So our data coach would go out to, to a school, Prior to that, prior to going out, they'd identify what assessment data they already have in the school and what data they want to look at. And they would walk them, they would walk a team of teachers through looking at and analyzing that data. So the first step they would do is they would have the teachers, the teachers wouldn't be looking at data, they had no data yet, but just talking to the teachers and having them predict, you know, that you just took the state assessment or you just implemented this NWA assessment, you know, in the fall. How do you think your students did? Who do you think did well? You know, what groups might have done poorly? So have them just think about and predict because you know, so often they're guided by the way they're assuming things are happening as opposed to the way the data, what the data really tells them. So they walk through a prediction um, F exercise. And then they go and they actually observe the data. So they look at the data. And then looking at the data, they go through a, a process where they observe it, but they don't make any, any um, decisions about why things happen. It's just, the, just observation. So as soon as somebody said, you know, well, these kids did poorly because we have this little sign that we hold that says not because, no because, like there's a not sign behind and around because this isn't about telling why. Let's just analyze the data. Then you think about um, inferences and then you look at, you know, ways you can react. So just an important protocol may be fairly simple, but if you're not used to looking at data, you don't, you need that structure. So providing that structure is something we do and it's a tool that we, we, we've used. Um, you know, something as simple as putting together a matrix to get an inventory of all your assessments. Again, you know, as a school, you may not think or really realize all the information that's already there. You know, you don't need to be creating necessarily more assessments. Let's first talk about what we have at our fingertips. So as you're uh, in a school, as, as gr a group in a school is coming up with our uh, response to intervention and trying to place students, the first thing you need to do is say, what data do I have that I can use to help inform those decisions? Um, so you know, it might be as simple as putting together an inventory of what, is, what data you have. Um, we do an annual conference, and I thought it was pretty cool until I came here. Um, <laughs> this is a very cool conference. So um, you know, these types of conferences are so important in helping educate and make people aware and hopefully you know, getting some good pieces of advice that you can take back. We have a New Hampshire network, so it's an online network where you can do, um, teachers are all part of this network. It's closed, so it's not open to the general public. Um, but teachers have a log on and they can get to resources. So a lot of the resources I showed you are on this network. Um, you can have discussions, so a teacher can post up a question and have a conversation um, among, with other teachers as well. So you know, that type of infrastructure is nice to have within your, schools, your school districts. On those, Irene mentioned the learning paths, so they're actual online courses that we've developed that the teachers can take to learn you know, more about growth data or more about um, you know, using the Performance Plus uh, reporting engine. 
And then we have toolkits on that site too. So it's a set of resources like that data dive protocol. You know, that's in a toolkit on there with, with lots of different um, components to how you do that data dive. So I think we're probably right on time or close. So with that, um, most importantly, you know, you all should have our contact information. It's, I think it's on that thumb, the thumb drive, the pen drive. Um, I know it's going to be posted someplace as well. Um, so please, you know, Irene and I are always, um, always welcome the opportunity to talk to you more. We can get in contact with one of our data coaches. Um, we recently, real, when we realized Delaware is a SIP Performance Plus state as well, um, we, we, they actually came up to a conference we had and we, our coaches are talking with their coach um, and, and sharing more information too. So, um, you know, it helps both ways. Uh, it certainly helps us to, to learn how you're using it and learn ways that we can improve it as well. So please contact us anytime. Thank you.